So, welcome today to uh, windsurftoots.com. We will have kind of an interesting video for you. This is something that I have actually never done before and that I was not able to find too much information on. But this is the offline domain join or installing uh, a domain controller in the Active Directory architecture using media. So this is completely unscripted, unrehearsed. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I have a feeling that it will not be too difficult, but you can never know when you create a video in untested waters. So as you can see, uh, we have our first domain controller and we have what will be our second domain controller. I wanted to add a, a second DC to our lab environment so we could do different testing. Um, I have an idea I want to show people how to change the FISMO roles back and forth between two domain controllers. And so what I'll do is I'll just show you the setup we have here. You can look in Active Directory and we only have one domain controller right now. Uh, anybody will tell you that this is not good. We do have our second domain controller, in, well what will be our domain controller, installed in the computer's OU. So you can see it is not a domain controller as of yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post the link to the directions that I'm going to follow from Microsoft. <clears throat> you will need a piece of media that you can send uh, between the two domain controllers and the real reason why you would want to do this, let's say you have a large Active Directory installation, the database can be fairly large at times and if you were trying to replicate let's see, let's say a uh, server from New York to California maybe to uh, San Antonio, different remote sites around the nation, you wouldn't really want to do this if you could avoid it over a slow WAN link. So what I'm using here is a simple USB thumb drive that I've engaged on my Citrix uh, Zen server setup and we're just gonna go through this so <laughs> hopefully this won't be a uh, going down in a blaze of glory tutorial. The first thing that we need to do is we are going to open up the command line because m creating the media is a command line process. So we see here we just have a command line and the first command that we're going to run is a command called ntdsutil and we're going to execute that. Now once we get there we are going to activate instance ntds. So we're going to do this. So now we've gone into this activated mode and we are going to create an ifm so install from media, that's what that stands for. Now that we're at the IFM prompt, we're going to basically export the sys file, um, some registry keys, the Active Directory database as it is now um, to a media that we can then send to the second domain controller. In our case, I'm just doing this more as an exercise to show you how to do it and to learn it for myself. So we're just going to be passing it between two systems on the same a hypervisor, but the principle is exactly the same as if you were to put this on a thumb drive and mail it all across the country. So what we're going to do is we're going to do create sysfile full because we want the entire sysfile and then you're going to give it the path to the uh, media. You, probably in all reality a thumb drive is going to be the easiest thing to do because you can just mount it as a drive. So my thumb drive, I'll show you, is mounted as the E drive. It's just a four gigabyte drive, nothing too large. I got it from free uh, from Newegg with a purchase. Go Newegg. So E and I'm going to do IFM, that's the folder, install from media. And let's see what happens. So this looks like it's going to create a snapshot. And so we have the source database here. So this is on the C volume, Windows NTDS, NTDS.DIT. It looks like it's going to defragment the LDAP database before it goes on. And this is running pretty quickly. We're already at 40% and this was just a couple seconds. And looks like we're just about done the infinite infamous 99 percent that takes the longest time so okay we have a bunch of messages here let's see if we can just take a look and see what it's actually doing looks like it's exporting the policies that we have in place it looks like it is uh, exporting some registry 
entries, the security and the system registry entry, and their information from the sys file. So let's go through and take a look and see what we've got. Let's quit out of here. All right, so let's quit out of there. And let's go see what's on that thumb drive. So go in here, and we should have an IFM. Yep, we do have an IFM folder. It created it for us. And okay, so what do we have here? We have the ntds.dit file. We have, it looks like, yep, there's some registry keys in here, the system registry key and the security registry key. And we have information that would be stored in the sysvol about our domain. And we've got a couple policies here. And it looks like if we were to have scripts, we don't actually have any scripts in this environment that we're using on user or um, computer boot up, but they would be there. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm going to unmount this device from this virtual machine in Zen Center here. I'll actually show you just what this looks like from Zen Center. And I want to go here. And this is under storage. And as you can see here, you can add and remove devices. So we're just going to do uh, detach. And you can see it's just going to remove the association. I'm a big fan of Zen Center, actually. We use VMworks, uh, VMware ESX where I work, uh, but I'm very, very happy with Zen Center. There's some licensing issues that uh, Zen, or I'm sorry, Zen Center is Zen Server, I should say. It's much more liberal with its licensing. Okay, so we're going to attach our USB stick to our DC2 machine. So let's hop over to our DC2 machine. We should have our thumb drive here. Okay, and as you can see, we have this thumb drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the old DC promo. <clears throat> and this time we are definitely going to run in the advanced mode because we are going to have to install from a not usual media source okay so we are going to join an existing forest we are going to add a domain controller to the existing domain and currently logged in yep uh, that is fine I am logged in with a user that can add this system to the domain Gonna select this. So this, I just want to give you a little bit of information about what a global catalog server is. Um, we talked about DNS and how it's important, um, but a global catalog server. I'm gonna select next. Global catalog server is actually a subset of Active Directory you could think of it as it's really optimized for queries so when we were going into Active Directory um, yep we do want to continue okay this is uh, I'll, I'll continue with this explanation in a moment this is going to be the key option right here uh, before we select this I'll finish the global catalog so global catalog is a streamlined version of the Active Directory database that is really more tailored to querying so when we go into our Active Directory users and computers right and we select here and we go find this is querying against the global catalog server the same thing too if you were to browse your network that network browse is actually querying against the global catalog server, not the actual Active Directory database itself. So that's just a little bit of important information. If you have a global catalog server, it really comes into play more when you have sites. You want a global catalog server in each site to speed up queries. But So now you can see here, replicate data from media at the following location or replicate data over the network from an existing domain controller. This is the difference right here. So obviously we want to install from media. So we are going to go to our thumb drive here. Do this. And we're going to select our IFM folder and let's see what happens. Okay. Ah, wonderful. So let the wizard choose an appropriate domain controller. You know, I'm going to use this one. I don't really want the wizard to choose for me. This is a learning experience, so let's try to get as much out of it as we can. 
Okay, for best performance and recovery, store the database and log files in separate volumes. Really, it would be good if we had a separate volume for these databases, but we don't. If you were to have a RAID 5 array, you could store it on like a D drive. That would be beneficial, but it's okay. Directory services restore mode administrator. Okay, let's create a password here. And as you can hear by all my key types, I like to use a long password. I do recommend having good strong passwords on any domain controller. Okay, so now we are going to review our options here. Look, seem to be pretty right, and we're going to click next. Okay, so let's just watch this DNS install here. It's going to install it for us. If it takes an excessive amount, oh, it's going through pretty fast. So it's going to install the Group Policy Management Console for us. Now this is going pretty speedily, but again, imagine if you had a very large Active Directory environment. Let's say the sysfile was very large, you had a lot of scripts, you had a lot of things that you were replicating in sysfile. This could take a while, especially over a slower LAN link. If you maybe had a frame relay connection, even if you had a dedicated like a half a meg frame relay connection in a point-to-point -point configuration between your Active Directory sites and uh, oh, as you can see there it was finishing replication um, or if you had a VPN and you didn't even have dedicated bandwidth this could take quite some time over a WAN link okay so this is finished I'm glad nothing bombed out on me. This would have been embarrassing. And we are going to restart and let's see what happens. Hopefully we will have a new domain controller in our WinServe Toots Active Directory environment. Let's, let's do a little refresh Active Directory. See what comes up. And let's look at our domain controllers. Hopefully there's another domain controller. All right, yeah, it looked like it was successful. It's always kind of neat when you learn something new. Um, Windows and Microsoft always come up with just something a little bit new. You know, if, you, if you've been working with Windows for a while, sometimes it can be easy to become complacent and, you know, think you know that just about everything there is to know. But really, with most iterations of, of Windows, they do come up with something that is pretty good about enhancing the functionality, at least on the server side. You know, arguments can be made uh, before um, or for or against that on the desktop side, but on the Windows side, uh, the works server, server side, they do pretty good. So, well, we've got administrative tools here. Yeah, and it does look like it populated everything, so let's fire up the old dsa.msc at the run line. As soon as this finish is coming up here, dsa.msc, and this just might take one second here. And now I will say, let's say you do create a thumb drive where your uh, backup is is installed. You ran through that process. It will still take a little bit of time to replicate across the WAN link if you have made a lot of changes so this just kind of takes a snapshot for where your Active Directory structure is at the time you export that uh, that database so let's see here domain controllers yep and we do see both of these here on this second domain controller we have now so thank you for following along kind of with this ad hoc presentation I'm glad nothing bombed out on me as you can see this is a pretty pretty easy process so I would definitely recommend using it if you have a lot of different remote sites and you may be setting up a lot of different domain controllers you can really save yourself a lot of bandwidth across the WAN link so um, look out for our next tutorial it's going to be pretty interesting it'll be on TCP IP uh, protocol hardening through using group policy objects and controlling the registry it will be the first real kind of security a real security uh, tutorial that we do that you probably won't find in a lot of Windows networks but it can actually really harden your environment so look out for that have a great night and thanks again for joining us here on windservetoots.com